Okay, so in this video what I'd like to do is go over the Joomla access control. And we want to mimic a scenario where we have a runner's group and we have two runners specifically that will fall under this group. So the way the example is going to be is only people that are registered and that they log into the Joomla site will be able to see this runner group menu item. And we're going to create two specific users called Ben and Sophie and they will be runners who can see this runner group menu item but they will actually have child menus under runner group they will only be able to see their own menu item let's just say they have running programs and super secret training programs for themselves so they can't see each other's but they can only see their own now in this video what we'll do is I'll show you how I did it in the back end how it works in the front end and then we'll recap quickly in the back end to kind of reiterate what we did and the way that we're going to go about this is the first step we actually have to create the groups the second step is you actually have to assign access levels to the groups and number three and four you can do in any different pattern um, it might be actually easier to to assign the menu items and articles to the access levels and then let your users naturally flow out from that but the way that we'll describe it is is basically just this one two three four pattern show you how it was or show you how it works and then we'll recap in the back end again okay so the first item is what we actually do is create the user groups and you can see I've already set up my three main groups I'm concerned with and they are going to be underneath the registered group so with registered it has a direct child of group runners group runners has a direct grandchild of group Ben and then also a sibling group Sophie now the reason that I actually appended or started these group names with the word group is it just makes things a lot easier than to just say runners Ben Sophie because that would be the same naming process we would have for the actual view access levels if we didn't put a prefix on it so that's the reason I put group in front of these three just to make it a lot easier to to see where where things are now if I were to go ahead and create let's say I wanted to do the same thing and do group bikers so the first thing I would do if I wanted to mimic this setup right here is I would say new I'll name it group bikers and I want them to be under registered I'll hit save and new and let's say I've got a group of blue team so they can see everything for this biking schedule but they can only see their team's menu item now what what happened here is they would actually be underneath group bikers not under registered but under group bikers so we'll say group bikers blue team I'll hit save and new group bikers red team so of course red team cannot see blue teams blue teams cannot see red teams they can only see their own teams and you can see right here just the natural hierarchy group bikers and there's group bikers blue team same thing with runners we have these two runners here that's how that's going to flow so we'll associate hit save and close and now you can see the hierarchy if we go ahead and move down here here's bikers that we just did with their two child elements here's runners with their two child elements okay now that we've done the user groups we're going to move on to the access levels okay so I've opened up the access levels and you can see right now again I've made sure that the view access level starts or is prepended kind of smart named so that way if I'm looking at it directly I know exactly what we're dealing with here not just name it runner Sophie Ben I want to name it with a prefix that makes sense so the same thing if I were to recreate bikers I would say new and I would say view 
access level bikers. Now, the thing to think about for the access level in the groups, it's almost a one-to-one -one tie, and you have to set up the groups, but what the view access level does is it gives you the ability to now tie the menu items in the articles. So what I would do is in this new view access level for bikers, I could tie it to group bikers. And if I go on ahead and do save and new, and if I do view access levels, bikers, red team, I want to tie it to group bikers red team. And that's all I have to do. I don't have to tie it to group bikers. I don't have to tie it to registered. I just need to tie it to group bikers red team. I'll hit save and new. And I want to actually do a third view access level bikers blue team. If I go ahead and scroll down, group bikers blue team. So that's the same exact thing that I did with my runners group. So I'll go ahead and hit save and close, and we're done with the access levels. Okay, so if we remember on the flow of, of what we're going to do, we created the groups, we created the access levels, we're going to go ahead and assign the users, and then we'll assign the articles, or show you how we did the articles and menu items. And again, we have a runner group, only people that are signed in. We have two specific runners, Ben and Sophie, and clearly they can't see each other's super secret training programs, etc. So if I look at my user menu or manager and I look at Ben, I can see that he's been assigned to group runners because I want him to see that group runner menu, and then I only want him to see his page, his menu item. Same thing with Sophie. I only want Sophie to be able to see hers and the parent, which is group runners. So if I just go ahead and click on a user and I look at the assigned group for Ben, I can see right here he's tied to group runners and group Ben. Did the same thing with Sophie on her scenario. Okay, so if I look at Sophie, I come back to her assigned user groups menu. I'll come down and she's assigned to group runners. She can't see group N, but she can see group Sophie. Okay, so now if I go to the actual menu manager, I'm going to scroll down and we're going to look at these three menu items that we're talking about specifically. So there's a runners only page, and there's two child or sub menu items. There's a Ben's page and a Sophie page. Now what we've done is for each of these pages, and I'll see if I can shrink my page up a little bit here and, and make it easy to see. So if I scroll down, I can see that for the runners page, it has the view access level runners. For Ben's page, I've tied it to this access level for Sophie's page, etc. And we do that, so if we go ahead and go into the menu item and here we are in the menu item if I go to the right side for parameters you'll notice because I've smart named everything there's no way that I see those group names that I've created and because I actually prefixed everything with view access level I can see aha even though I created the groups I've got to be able to allow the menu items in the articles some way to control permissions and that is with the view access levels. So we'll leave it as access level runners and we'll save or close out of here. And back on the menu items if I go into Ben's page, let's look at his. How is his page set up? Again if I go to the access level, it's view access level Ben. So only Ben can see it, Sophie can't. That's what we want. And the third setup, or the third way that we do everything, is we're going to actually look at the articles. So we have a Ben runner, a Sophie runner, same thing. We've set up the access levels on each of these articles. I'm in the article manager. Let's just run into Ben's, or 
page real quick and we'll show you where we do that. We're in Ben Runner page. Ben can see it, no Sophie. If I look at my view access level, view access level Ben. Okay, so that's how we set everything up. We created the groups. We created the view access levels which were tied to the groups. We assigned users, Ben and Sophie, and then we made sure the menu items and articles were given the correct access level. So let's go ahead and run it through the website and, and test it out. So again, there's a runner group. Only signed in people can see this menu item. There's two runners, Ben and Sophie, and they each have their own page, and neither can see the other's page. Okay, so right now I have just these three menu items right here. I don't have my runner menu, so let's go ahead and log in with Sophie. And if I log in with hers, we will see runners only page and the submenu item Sophie Runner. We don't see Ben's, we only see the runner page and Sophie's page. If I go ahead and click on Sophie's page, Sophie Runner, no Ben. Okay, if we log out, we're not logged in as a registered user, so that main runner page goes away. So let's do the same thing with Benny. So if I log in with Ben, runner's only page shows up, Ben's page shows, and basically this is exclusive to Ben. Sophie can't see it, and we're good to go. So let's recap real quick. We created groups. We had to tie access levels to the groups, and I think that the main key to realize is the access levels are what the menu items and the articles actually see. The menu items and the articles don't see groups. They see access levels, so it's as if you almost have to double dip or recreate the same instance twice to be able to apply menu and article level access and then of course we create users who have those permissions so let's recap real fast in the back end so the first thing I did was set up my user groups and if we scroll down we can see basically the hierarchical setup we have group runners and their group parent is registered. If I hit close and I go back, we have group Ben. Basically by this little indicator here, its group parent is group runners. And then if we look at group Sophie, it's going to be the same thing. Group runners is the parent group. So we've set up the group. Now let's go into the access level. I look and see I've got my access levels, my runners, Sophie and Ben. So if I go ahead and just look at view access level runners, it is going to be tied to the group of just group runners. That's it. And if I close and I look at view access level Sophie, it is tied to just group Sophie that's it and then of course finally if I look at group or uh, view access level Ben it is tied to only group Ben now what I've done is I've actually opened the user manager user manager sorry and with Sophie I can scroll down I actually had that checked by accident with Sophie. She needs to see group runners because she needs to see that main runners page in her own. And if I quickly go back to the user man manager and I look at Ben, I can see right off his user groups are group runners as well as group Ben. So let's flip quickly to the menu manager. And if I go ahead and scroll down, and I look at my runners only page and Ben's page 
if I resize my browser real quick. Okay, got the browser resized. Runner's page has this access level, Ben's page, that access level, Sophie's, that access level. Let's go to the article and then we're done. So here I am in the article manager and once again just making sure that the articles have the appropriate access levels as they do and that way you're all set up. That's the Joomla access level control hierarchy and I hope that helps you guys out.